Ever wonder what a platform event is and how to use it? Here's your chance. Mira Nair will break down platform event architecture and how to use them. Welcome to 100 Days of Trailhead, where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, and invest in ourselves. We are your trail guides here to support you on your learning journey. We release videos weekly. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In the description below, you can find links for everything we mention in this video, as well as books and resources we found useful. Visit our blog, 100daysoftrailhead.com, for other helpful Salesforce and tech content. Platform events are a great way to communicate and message inside and outside of Salesforce. Mirinair is a Salesforce certified system and application architect with 12 years of experience in the Salesforce ecosystem. She leads the Salesforce Trividrum Developer Group and also a co-leader of SAIMA Architect Study Group, active community speaker and blogger. Thank you so much 100 Days of Trailhead team for featuring me. Today we are going to see top 5 standard platform events. Before getting started, a little about myself. I am currently working as a Salesforce Architect at USD Global India. I have total 14 years of IT experience in which 12 has been on Salesforce platform. I am a Salesforce Certified System and Application Architect and also a co-leader of Trivandrum Developer User Group. Before getting started with standard platform object details, let us see the common architecture of event-based communication platform. The major components of event-based or event-driven architecture are event, which is basically a change in state of a business process or object, which will in turn will produce an event message, which contains the details of that particular change. And this event messages will be produced by event producers and that will be published to an event bus. That event bus is a medium or communication channel which will queue all the messages published to it and based on the system resource availability, it will release the messages to the consumers. So consumers will be getting messages to which they are subscribed and they will be able to further process on that. So the first standard platform event that we are going to see is change data capture. So when you want to keep an external system in sync with Salesforce, you will be able to utilize this particular feature. To make use of this feature, first you basically need to enable the feature called change data capture. This can be enabled from setup and in a developer edition, you will be able to enable CDC only for maximum five objects. But if you have an additional license, you can enable it for additional objects also. This is basically available for all custom objects and some standard objects also. Here in this screenshot, you can see I have enabled four set of objects, including contact. So when I have enabled CDC for a particular object, a change event will be produced whenever a new record is inserted or updated, deleted or undeleted. And that object name is called change event. For example, if for contact, it is called contact change event. You can see a sample structure of contact change event here. It contains basically an ID which is a unique identifier of contact change event and also it contains the replay ID. So replay ID can be used to subscribe to the same message again in case an issue is happening while subscribing to this particular message. Also the other important component as part of contact change event is change event header. This contains details about what is the change type. Basically if it is an insert operation it will be create otherwise it can be update or delete. And the timestamp commit use user details and which are the fields which is getting updated, the record IDs which is part of the current event publish, also the fields which is getting updated as part of the operation. All these details you will be able to get from the contact change event object. In addition to publishing this to an external system, you will be able to subscribe 
change data capture internally also that is through asynchronous trigger so asynchronous trigger will be executed as a normal trigger itself you can see a sample here which i have created for contact event trigger this will be always executed as an after insert operation here what i am doing is whenever a contact is getting inserted or updated i will be processing that contact record details and i will be updating some details back to the parent account the major advantage of consuming contact change event internally is that since this is getting executed asynchronously you will be getting a separate set of governor limits thus saving some of your governor limits now let us see a second standard platform event which is called flow execution error event whenever a screen type flow element is failing at that moment system is going to generate a standard platform event called flow execution error event and you will be able to consume this internally only that is through a flow or through a process builder you will be able to consume this flow execution error event i have consumed this internally to basically create exception details and to log exception records let me quickly show you a sample flow that i have used to consume this particular standard platform event here you can see the platform event that i consumed here is flow execution error event and consuming this i am basically inserting details to an exception record here you can see the details i am inserting details to the exception object by getting details from the current record which is the flow execution error event so there is a parameter called flow error message which i will be able to consume and copy the details back to my variable similarly there are other details called the flow name flow current version flow element which caused a issue all these details you will be able to retrieve from the standard flow execution error event let us see our third standard platform event called batch apex error event this is similar to flow execution error event in previous case we were getting exception details from a standard screen flow component in batch apex error event whenever there is an exception happening within a batch apex process that details will be available within batch apex error event standard platform event and you will be able to consume this through apex triggers flows processes or through streaming api meaning you can consume this platform even externally also but to fire batch apex error event you basically need to consume or implement an interface called database.raise platform events if you have consumed this particular interface automatically if there is an exception happening within your process or within your apex job that will be logged to batch apex error event then even internally also you will be able to consume this batch apex error event and you will be able to process this in this example you can see this trigger is on batch apex error event iterating over all the details and it is querying async apex job and retrieving additional details of that apex job like apex class name then it is checking if the apex class name is a specific one it is creating an exception record and logging details to exception object so this is one way of consuming standard batch apex error event let us see our fourth standard platform event which is called order status change event in your traditional sales process flow even if the order record is getting created within sales source most of the time the actual order process might be happening outside of sales source system it can be a sap or some other system and in that case it's very important for you to communicate or send the order status details to the external system very recently in our project also we had to create custom platform even to satisfy this requirement that is whenever an order status is getting updated we were we used to fire standard platform even but with the latest sales source release with the api version 51 we have this order status change event which we will be able to consume internally through 
apex triggers, flow or process or even external system will be able to subscribe to this particular standard event. But if you would like to get notifications on order status update, under setup, instead order settings, you need to enable a feature called enable order events. If this is enabled automatically on each of your order status update, a platform event will be fired. You can see a screenshot of sample flow that I used to consume standard order status change event. Here what I have done, I consumed the order status change event and based on that value status, I am updating the comments instead of the order objects itself to see the details of order status, details like who updated, what, what is the change state and all these details. Now let us see the fifth one which is platform status alert event. This one also can be consumed internally or externally through streaming API. Basically when we are performing a user specific operation and if something is failing, system will be automatically firing details to platform status alert event. As an example, when you are basically creating a record and if a formula evaluation is failing because of some internal error, a platform event will be fired to platform status event alert. And you will be able to consume this internally also to log details. Here you can see I am basically consuming this platform status alert event and publishing a post. This is one of the examples of how you will be able to consume standard platform status event alert. Thank you so much for watching this session. I hope this was useful for you. And with that, we're at the end. What are you planning on using platform events for? Comment below. We would also love to hear what video topics you want us to cover in future videos in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you stayed with us, here's a bonus. Salesforce has released some standard platform events recently, which can be consumed internally and externally to ease some of the processing and exception handling. So as a part of this video, we can see top five standard platform events and its usage within Salesforce. Thank you for spending time with us. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we share weekly content to support your tech and Salesforce learning journey. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.